Welcome and hello. Welcome to the Gold Plan video library that includes Greenleaf Financial Fitness Series and other financial professional series involved with personal financial wellness. This series, along with other videos, will be posted on our Go Plan and YouTube channel, websites, and other social media outlets. My name is Jim Hiles, and as your host, I think it's important to highlight what financial wellness is and how tools like Go Plan 101 can help Americans achieve their goals and wishes. So, what is financial wellness? It is defined as the overall financial health of an individual. What it does for you is probably most important. It helps you increase understanding all things related to money. It can also help decrease stress, help you make better decisions, and perhaps most importantly, keep you on track as things change in the future. What's Go Plan 101? Well, Go Plan 101 combines web technology and educational content with behavioral change solutions, free software, and a huge resource center full of focused responses. Translation? <laughs> Simple. Go Plan 101 is a cool site that helps people deal with their money issues so they can do what they want to do. And you also have the capability on our site to talk to a coach or go right to the resource. At the end of the day, financial wellness is only as good as the actions taken. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Good afternoon and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, today for our latest installment of the Greenleaf Financial Fitness Series. Today's topic is investing made easy. So we'll see if we can make you believe that. As always, I'd like to make quick introductions of who we are, uh, the people that help make these financial fitness series possible. Uh, up top, we have Jamie Greenleaf. Jamie is a partner and advisor with Gafaro Greenleaf. Here with me today, as usual, is uh, managing partner Jim Hiles of First Capital Advisors Group. And I am Jim D. I'm a financial advisor with Greenleaf Financial. Jim Hiles, why don't you start us off in the financial wellness wheel here? Sure. Uh, afternoon, everybody. And welcome to Financial Wellness today. We're talking about investing. When you look at financial wellness, it's about all of these subjects coming together in a financial plan, which serves to meet your, your purposes, your goals. And we all can work on every phase or, or circle up here. But today we're going to focus specifically on investing and, and look at how we can make it easy to start and finish putting yourself into a position to invest using the tools we've got at Greenleaf. Okay, here's the excuses. Well, I think we've heard them all and I think we've tried them all, <laughs> right? It's just sometimes like anything they, sometimes else. Sometimes they work, sometimes they right? don't. Right? You don't know where to start. And we've talked to people about, you know, hey, you should start investing. And they say, well, I don't know where to begin. How do I start? Where do I go? Uh, it's too complicated. So I don't know where to, I don't know what form to fill out or what the words are talking about or whatever. It can be intimidating, or you can even feel like embarrassed, like you should know, but you don't know. But I've heard, hey, it's also uh, I'm too old. I can't, I can't. I, you know, saving, I'm gonna, you know, I retire soon. I don't think so. It's never too late to start. Or I don't have enough money to save. Well, you know, there there are ways to find money, and there are ways to save money, which at the end of the day are all about building financial habits, which allow you to put money aside, essentially pay yourself first. So you can live off the rest of it and comfortably get to your financial goals. And the last one, which is the most infamous, is we tend to put things off. And so today we're going to hopefully show you a way to, to maybe deal with some of these issues. And we get it. Everyone needs to start at a certain place and build from there. For, for some of you that have started investing already, this could be a good warm up or another tool that you might want to use to uh, help uh, yourself or another family member invest. Sure. Great. And. So, so why the disconnect? I mean, there's maybe part of the problem is choice overload, right? Like Jim just went through some of the excuses and you know, everyone knows how many companies are out there in this industry, in the marketplace that are, that are in this business chasing uh, customers around. So uh, we know that shortage of choices is definitely not a valid excuse. So what should we be thinking about? Well, I, th I think it's, you know, money is... <laughs> Saving money is kind of like going to the gym or going to the dentist or getting a doctor checkup. It's it's one of these things you sort of have to program yourself to do and and think you know longer term about you know where are you going to be you know in the future. Whether that means you're saving for somebody's retirement, you're saving for a vacation, 
you're saving to do travel, you're saving to just spend time and do things with family or purchase a vacation home or a three wheeler or whatever you're looking to do. You, you put those goals and dreams out there and all those goals and dreams need to be funded somehow. They have to be paid for. Well, now you sort of back into that and say, what do I need to do to start making money to help get to me where I need to go? Right, which is much more fun than thinking about investing. It's thinking about what am I going to do if I have invested properly in the future, right? Yeah, money is a means to an end. Right. So the problem, one of the problems, if you don't already know, and I think we've said this enough times in these presentations, that you know, if you want a goal and you don't have one, or <laughs> this is a goal, most Americans are just simply unprepared for retirement. So the number one reason to invest today is to prepare for the future called retirement, which we've talked about ad nauseum on Greenleaf or Greenleaf Financial and GFPlan.com. But it's a serious issue. There aren't enough people that have enough money. Well, that has to do with putting together some discipline and building the habits so you don't find yourself falling into the trap where you don't have enough money saved for your retirement account or your retirement savings is less than 1100 bucks, or you don't have enough money when you get to retirement to do much. Right. Okay. So it's really about behavior, right? I mean, so much of this that we're talking about. So good investing is a, a big part of financial health, just like good physical health depends a lot on good habits, right? So does financial wellness. So let's take a, a quick look at the five steps that lead to establishing a habit straight out of psychology today. So first, you know, we have pre-contemplation, which is, you know, somebody who hasn't even considered uh, making a decision yet. So they're not really, that's not, nobody on this call. Uh, contemplation, you're thinking about it. Maybe that's a lot of people on this call, right? So you start to thought, start to think that maybe there's some changes I need to make. Determination um, is when you make a decision and you start to prepare for the next step, which is action, which is do it. I mean, I have to tell anybody what action means, right? And then um, from there, maintenance, that's one of the hardest parts, whether it's physical health or it's financial health, uh, continuing to do it. And once you have established that, that's how you establish a habit. So we're trying to you know, help people walk through that, those, those uh, steps today. I mean, the habit of, uh, that we're creating here really has to do with uh, money habits, just like any other habit in your life. But let's look at some of the easy things to do. Look at your financial situation and we talk about investing, so this is going to sound a little bit odd, but you have to look at what you owe first before you can start investing. In other words, if your debt and credit cards or whatever are paying interest rates that are 10, 12, 14, 15, 18, 20, 25 percent, my first guess is to not start worrying about investing money. You need to get out of debt first because if you think about it, if you're paying 22% in a credit card, you have to earn 22% in an investment just to break even with the same dollar. So we would probably first say, even before you start investing, check the debt scenario out, make sure that you're maximizing the payments and minimizing the interest payments that you can do in your debt. Once you're comfortable with your debt scenario, then I think you can look at some of the places, you, the easy places. Where can you start investing? I think the 401k is just a natural, if you probably already have one and you should be putting as much money as you can into the 401k. Why? Because it's tax advantaged. Uh, and if your employer matches, then, then it's uh, not free money, but it is free money to the extent that you're providing you with a match. So that would be a good place to go to because largely because the match, the tax advantages. Right. And we also have a lot of 403b participants on here. Same, same story for that. Yep, exactly. Um, so we're starting to see HSA, health savings accounts, sprout up through corporate America and through nonprofits. HSAs are specifically set up to help provide for tax advantage savings for health care costs. And right now, if you have it, you have to check with your HR department to see whether or not you have it, an HSA capability. We think they're great because it's the only you know, triple tax-free play here right. where you can put money into something without paying taxes, it grows tax-free, and if you're using it for qualified medical or qualified healthcare purposes, it's not taxable to you on the way out. So if you have this, use it. This is a nice, really nice tool to help save money. Look, eventually we're all gonna have healthcare costs. These HSAs can fund Healthcare costs, deductibles, out-of-pocket, things like that, even if it's in the future. So 
great idea if you have the opportunity to tap into right. an HSA. You're, you're going to need it for healthcare. Yeah, it's just kind of a matter of one, isn't it? Right. And I think that, okay, so those are kind of the three things you want to get down before you even start thinking about how much money should I start investing for my own personal, personal reasons or systematic reasons that you're thinking about, okay, I want to build this habit you're talking about. Well, you pay your, yourself first, you take money off the paycheck in your 401k, you don't seem to realize it when it's gone, you live off the balance. It's the same concept. You basically say, how can I get money coming out of my paycheck or out of my bank account where it goes and I don't even really even see it and I deal with what's left and I live on what's left. That's called paying yourself first. That's called in our language a systematic investment plan. That's probably the best way to start. You don't think about it, it's autopilot, and it just goes out. And the next thing you know, you've got five, eight, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars sitting in an account somewhere that you didn't have because you know you didn't do it. Right. Because people wait to they say I'll invest what's left over at the end of the month. And if you live that way, then chances are you don't you don't have it left right. over at the end of the month. So paying yourself first is a great tip. So let, let's look at the benefit of a simple habit like investing twenty five dollars a week. You know, one of the excuses we saw earlier, people uh, saying, uh, I don't have the money. Well, down below, you know, those little icons there, the pictures, we see a simple way that you'd be able to find $25 uh, in your weekly budget. Uh, but look at the growth of that over time. You know, if we look at a 25, simple $25 a week investment in, a, in a, an average uh, performing uh, investment, 10 years, $16,470. And if you have 25 years to go, look at the numbers there. I mean, you're talking about almost $70,000. Uh, and Jim, that shows the power of compounding, right? Well, yeah. I mean, if so, 25 bucks is 25 bucks a week, right? Right. So, so it's, it, 25 it, bucks a week. Do, you can do the math with me, right? That's 100 bucks a month, right? 100 bucks a month, right? right. And you got 1,200 bucks a year, and you got 25 years. 32.5. That's 32.5, right? So the, the the reason this is now 70,000 versus just 32.5 is because the money's going to work into something, and we're assuming a 6% growth rate here, and it, it really doesn't matter what it's in. It's going to be growing and compounding. One of the values of putting money in systematically is you allow money to grow upon itself and compound over time. And when you look at the sacrifices you might have to make to get there, you know, would you rather give up a few you know, lunches here and there, a couple of cups of coffee here and there, than have $70,000 to play with 25 years from now? Great. So... Let's see how we can get started on this. I think, you know, if you don't, if you haven't heard us say gfplan.com, you're going to hear it again today. GF, go to gfplan.com. Go on the web, gfplan.com. It is a really nice, inexpensive, free, is act. And it's <laughs> so free, inexpensive, so it's free. It's, it's really inexpensive. But go there because it's a great resource. This is a financial wellness website. One of the areas that we're going to focus on today is just the investment part. But there are more parts, wills, trusts, Social Security, insurances, retirement, and so on. So click on this green leaf, and you're going to go into the, are you ready to invest? You click on the green leaf, and you're going to go into a page, and you have some choices. You get to make some simple choices here. And we have two good providers on this page set up for you, already set up, ready to go. Schwab, we can open a Schwab account, or you can open a Betterment account directly through this site. The one thing about Schwab is you've got to have a $5,000 account minimum to start the Schwab account. Betterment does not have an account minimum, so simply pick your choice. We're going to use Betterment today. We're going to go right into that Betterment account. We're going to get started on the minimum accounts. Good. We're going to show, and this is we're going to show you how to open a Betterment account, and then below that you see if you have an existing account. If you've already done this, this is where you're going to come back to log in again after you do this. Uh, we're going to run through these slides quickly so you can see how simple it is, and, and also how it's going to look on your screen. So first page here, you basically you enter some very basic information to create your account. You enter your email and you create your own password. It'll tell you if it's not good enough, but there, it's a pretty simple process. Then basic contact info. So what you're doing here is you're also setting up the account by putting this in, right? That's the right. This is your, your work. You're walking through right. opening an account by yourself. Good. Next, you're going to need to provide, and because you're opening an account, you need to provide your social security number, date of birth. And then you create your own security information. So uh, pick the questions you want to answer and answer them. Put the words in there that you want to put in. And then uh, basically you'll receive a, a verification email that will just to verify that you entered the proper email address, make sure everything's working properly. You, you click on in that email, click on verify now and you'll get a welcome email. 
if, if you're going through this and if you're watching this later on and any of these screens look a little bit different to you, don't, don't worry. It's all pretty simple stuff that you'll be able to walk through. Some of these screenshots are from a demo and some are from my actual account, but it's, it's very easy step by step. They walk you right through. And this is what you'll see when you open an, an, an account. This is what your login page will look like. You can save this screen to your home screen and you can, you can also save it uh, on your phone. You can pin uh, this home login screen right to your, uh, your iPhone or your Android phone. And, um, and you can also get access it through the gfplan.com homepage. So once you have an account, this is what it's gonna look like. You're gonna have, you won't have any money in there, but obviously we're not gonna deposit for you. We're not that generous. You're not gonna give them $40. <laughs> it's free, but we're not paying people to participate yet. Okay. So, so, um, so click settings. Now we're, what, what we did was we established an account. So now we're gonna show you how to start investing. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna click that little word down there. I highlighted as big as I could so you can see it. Click settings. And from there, you're going to link a bank account. So you're going to click the word bank accounts, the words bank accounts. From there, they, they give you a, a choice of the big banks. And if that one of your if your bank isn't on that list, simply start typing it in in the search bar. Or um, you even have an option at the bottom there to add account by routing number. So your bank is in there. Uh, I'll, I'll bet you. Uh, once you do that, we selected Wells Fargo for the purposes of this, right? Once we select your, your, your bank, uh, login will pop up on the screen. And what you're going to do is enter your online banking credentials. This obviously assumes you do online banking. So you, you literally enter your Wells Fargo username and password here. You'll probably get notification from your bank also that you're doing this. But this is how you link your bank account. Once you do that, you go into the general investing um section on the on the uh, betterment website and then under recurring deposits in the bottom right there you just click on setup the next screen you basically will just enter the deposit amount and the frequency that you want to make those deposits so in this case they put fifty dollars frequency monthly on the first and 15th that drops down you can, you can pick weekly if you want, monthly if you want, your choice. Is Once it, you do is that. There, is there any magic number to the amount, Jim, or anything? The, the, you could put any dollar amount you want in there. Obviously, okay. the more you put in there, obviously, the, the better off you're going to be in long term. And, it, and you're not, this is not a, a contract. This is all voluntary. So you, you can cancel this whenever you want. Um, and if you need money back out of the account, there's a simple way to send it back to your, to your bank account. But it's an investment account. You should treat it that way. It's not, not a short-term savings. Um, and you'll get a confirmation screen. Um, it, it obviously verifies your bank account number. In this, in this case, it's a TD bank account. You um, click Schedule Deposit. And you should see this screen, meaning you're, you're set up and ready to go. And you're done. So you've now opened an account, set up a systematic investment plan with a specific dollar amount. And from there, you can go back to your home screen and you can do a lot of different things. You can you can change how aggressively you want to make your how aggressively you want to invest. You can open up another general investing account. You can open up a retirement account if you click on any of those over on the left. You want to open up a, a, a traditional IRA. You want to open up a Roth IRA. Um, all of those features are available to you through through your homepage. So now, now the, but these here, this is a portfolio that. You went through the account setup, a risk profile that says, here's what you prefer to see happen to your money, right? It's basically on, based on the uh, amount of money that you make, your age, and when you expect to retire. And they kind of guide you towards automatically a portfolio that's invested the way it should. Now, I overrode it. I can adjust that target allocation, which I did because I'm starting off with small dollar amount, so I took that and I made it 100% stocks okay. and for purposes so, of this. So when it says U.S. stock market, value stocks, whatever you're investing in down here, that's going to be pre-set up for you based on your risk profile. That's so you right. Just, you just have to basically say, I'm kind of this risk, That's right. and it's going to be invested for you. And, and what is it actually being invested in? Very low-cost ETFs. Okay, so ETFs. Exchange-traded so, funds. Exchange-traded funds, very inexpensive to run those funds essentially uh, probably the cheapest way to invest money that I know of in a fund. 
Right. And your your dollars, even at fifty dollars a crack going in here every other week, is going to be spread among these funds that you've selected. So you're building a portfolio. You're not just you know, taking a shot at whatever ideas out there. You are actually building a, a thoughtful, diversified portfolio. In this case, of of, of stocks based on your, what you want to have happen. Right. That's correct. It's, so it's all packaged and ready to go for you. It's all packaged, ready to go for you. Okay. And it's it's a very low uh, fee managed account. Okay. That'll be you'll see come out of the account quarterly. But this is uh, probably the most expensive way to do it with a full blown to work with a full blown advisory firm. Okay, so one of the things you're getting here is also performance, right? You can see how you're doing. Yep. Okay, so there are different views I can see. Like, okay, well, how did I do last month or year to date or or whatever in terms of my investments versus how the market did or what have you? That's all here too. Absolutely, performance up on the up on. If you look up, uh, you see it up right now. We're looking at holdings, but if you go on here and you have this account, you can click on your activity. You can click on um, your obviously your overview to see what you own. And of course, performance numbers will show up right here. And, and if I want to change my holdings around and say, you know what, I need the cash. I'm going on vacation. Thank you very much. It worked. What do I do to do that? You can create uh, your basically in, instead of making a deposit, you're making a withdrawal. Okay. So it's a simple button. Uh, I believe it's under transfers down here on the bottom left. Okay. And you just want to send money directly back to the account that you're taking money out of. It's a two-way street, not a one-way street. So right. you can certainly put money back in. So pretty easy if I need to get the money out. I'm not locked up. There's none of that going on. There's nope. No, okay. Great. Nope. There's no, like I said, no long-term contracts. It's it's but but we should think of it that way, right? Sometimes investments can be too liquid. So people think of them as a, you know, a, a, as a piggy bank that they want to go in and every time they want money out, they, you don't want to you don't want to do that. You want to leave it in there long term. Okay. So I guess the summary of today, our 20 minutes are up, and, and invested made easy. That's about as easy as you can make it. But don't forget to look at your debt scenario, look at your 401k, putting money into the 401k, maximizing it, increasing it if you need to. Uh, check on the HSAs, whether or not you have one, how to maximize those. And then look to gfplan.com and getting into either Schwab or Betterment or whatever makes most sense to you to start systematic personal investing to hit certain goals you've got set up. And so we covered a lot of ground and uh, let's just summarize. You know, it's time to put this information to work. We live in a wonderful and a free country, but it's up to us to take responsibility and move forward, particularly on our personal financial wellness. So let's take some action here. Let's go and explore this financial stuff. Take a buddy with you if you need to. Have some fun. Learn a little or, or learn a lot about what you can do financially. You know, these videos and websites, I hope you enjoy. I think they're great. But if you're like me, sometimes you just want someone to talk it out with. So seek out coaching from our site, from professionals who've been vetted to provide you with complimentary initial consultations as being part of the Go Plan 101 experience. If you've not started your planning, or even if you have, use today's video to explore the area of concentration. Make sure you understand how it impacts you. My favorite quote is, life doesn't go in a straight line. You need to stay on top of it. So consider subscribing to our newsletter or our YouTube channel. Please reach out to me if you want more help or have questions. And lastly, thank you for listening. Now, go plan and go attain your financial wellness goals. Jim Hiles signing off for today. Take care.